Hello everyone, a very good morning to you. Welcome to the Hungara Ring for day two of our Ferrari Challenge weekend here in Budapest. We are about to enjoy uh, qualifying two for our Trofeo Pirelli drivers to set the grid for race two to come this afternoon. The mix of Am and Pirelli drivers that will take to the track. And uh, here you can see exactly where we are then in the, I have to say, a truly lovely city of Budapest, well, just outside about uh, 26 kilometers or so from uh, central Budapest, uh, which features some magnificent architecture. And of course, the lovely river that runs uh, uh, through the uh, city is uh, a fine place to enjoy, particularly in weather conditions that we have at the moment, which are positively Caribbean-like. Um, already, I think this morning, um, I can't tell you, I'm looking at all my screens and I don't have an accurate uh, temperature, so we'll bring it up on screen for you in just a moment. But uh, I think already, well, there you can see air temperature of 24 degrees and a mere a flutter of two kilometers per hour wind to uh, break the heat cycle. The track temperature is 36 degrees already. It's going to be a hot one today, uh, both in terms of the action that we'll bring you from Ferrari Challenge and, of course, the uh, ambient temperature as well. The uh, spectators already making their way. Good morning. Hello. How are you? You're on the telly. It's nice to see you. I uh, hope you're feeling good. And Luke and Ermi, well, he'll feel slightly underwhelmed from yesterday and he'll be hoping to right the wrongs of yesterday because he probably uh, feels that he didn't deliver of his best. Uh, he, he, to my knowledge, remains the youngest ever driver when he started in the uh, Ferrari Challenge. And uh, there we can see a number of the drivers, including Alessio Dono, who uh, making his debut for CDP Best Lap here in the uh, Ferrari Challenge. Alessio there with that uh, lovely 4 day Challenge Evo and the sheer uh, magnificence of the beauty of the car. You can see when we uh, really, really zoom in and take a look, Alessio being prepared then for this uh, uh, qualifying session. He, of course, one of our uh, Trofeo Pirelli drivers. And you can see the uh, final preparations going on so that the uh, drivers can get out there and uh, <coughs> deliver uh, during this uh, qualifying session. And uh, plenty going on up and down the pit lane. Now this man, what a success story, Ange Barda. Um, yesterday, by winning the uh, Trofeo Pirelli Am race, has, he's now unbeaten, unbeaten through this season. He has taken five wins out of five race starts. And remarkably, as I was uh, welded into a studio yesterday to voice a uh, piece about one of the historic uh, Ferrari Challenge cars, the F360. Unbelievably, uh, Ange Bardi was uh, driving in the Ferrari Challenge back in the days of the F360. Uh, neither he nor the car have lost any of their ability. Nico Spalak alongside me. Good morning, as we see Dorian Penn uh, being... Uh, uh, safely ensconced into the car, ready for this qualifying session. She, of course, did a, a fantastic job yesterday in uh, uh, the battle with John Vortique right at the opening uh, stage of the race. John Vortique had put the car on pole position. She outdragged him into turn number one, as we see Marco Pulcini at the end of the pit lane. It was rude of me because I introduced you and then rattled on for a further five minutes. I apologize. I will switch my microphone off now. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dave. Yeah, it was a good race. Uh, great qualifying from John Vortique, uh, edging Dorian pin but she righted that wrong wrong in her mind obviously only um, very early in the race and then kept her foot in and kept p1 all the way to the jacket flag um, it is still pretty early 9 a.m here and in five seconds we will have a green light at pit exit which means two one green and 30 minutes of qualifying are getting underway and we have quite a few cars already filing out of pit lane which is not always the case in qualifying sometimes drivers wait until the track comes to them with temperature which realistically today is not really an issue i agree with you this is john Wartique then who uh, did a great job in qualifying yesterday put the car on pole position regrettably he didn't convert that into the race win Speaking to him after the race, uh, John is Mr. Consistency, there's no question about that. He says that he made uh, two errors. First error was he missed a sh gear shift going into turn number one. And not only that, he didn't check in his uh, driver's mirror and therefore was not aware of the fact that Dorian was coming around the outside. So he, I suspect, will not make the same mistakes 
stay as he did yesterday when it comes to the race. He needs to do nothing other than what he did yesterday in terms of qualifying because you cannot get, be get, a, get better than pole position and that is what he achieved. Um, and I think part of that was a, a, a wrong call on the strategy from the Scuderia Nicky Iron Lynx team who sent Dorian out early on. Uh, she banked a really, really good lap, felt that that was going to be good enough for pole position, came in and actually when John uh, destroyed the lap by the tiniest of margins, it has to be said, I don't really think the Scuderia Nicky Iron Lynx had the opportunity to respond at that point, Nico. No, but on the flip side, you can argue that um, the track is very abrasive, so yes. tire wear, tire degradation is significant. Yes. And uh, we saw, we've seen it yesterday from pretty much all of the drivers that they really only have one bite at the cherry mm. because they want to preserve the tires as much as possible for the race in the afternoon, especially in the temperatures that we will have. Oh, for sure. So, and it was not dissimilar yesterday. So I think. Would Dorian and the team would have preferred pole position? Absolutely, they would. I mean, they're racing drivers and a racing team. They want P1 and nothing else. And of course, there is a point involved. Absolutely. Equally, to get that one extra position and they're in the process ruining your tires for the race isn't a great option either. So um, I think you're right. I think they didn't necessarily expect to be relegated to P2, but uh, all that ends well is well, or Indeed. something like that, for the Scuderia Nicky Iron Lynx team. And for us, it gives us something to look at today. Will John Wartig be able to repeat the qualifying feat? And if he does, will he be able to convert it into P1 in the race? We will see. The CDP best lap driver then, who we were seeing in the final stages of preparation then, Alessio Dono, uh, we watch right now and will give us our first meaningful time. But as you can see, this is, and Nico, you described this perfectly yesterday. What we're finding with the drivers is they'll go out for their sort of sighting lap, their out lap, if you like. And then the second lap that they're on track becomes more of an installation lap. It's not the real deal lap. So even though we're running the clock on this lap, we're not expecting that. Well, indeed, he uh, makes way to allow Max Mugelli to go through. Uh, Nicolo Rossi who had a torrid time of it in the race yesterday. Unfortunately, he was turned around, having done a really good job in qualifying. Um, you know, I was talking, uh, I was talking to uh, David Fuminelli um, and also Nicolo Skiro about uh, how Nicolo Rossi's racecraft has improved so much uh, in the time that we have been watching him and in the time that he has been a competitor in the Ferrari Challenge. He really is now. Uh, something of a force to be reckoned with and uh, was really, really impressive in qualifying yesterday. Unfortunately, the prowess he showed in qualifying, uh, we weren't really able to see in the race because quite early on he got, uh, he got turned around, which is really regrettable. Uh, he's also a charming, lovely young man as well, and he will have picked himself up from that disappointment and he will come back at it with all guns a-blazing, may I say, today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he definitely showed you get the pace in the car yesterday and <clears throat> it was just huge misfortune on his side um, that he got got turned around and therefore brought up the rear for the majority of the race um, but he had the pace and he will take comfort and pride and uh, confidence from that fact as well into this day and uh, as we watch Dorian Pin rounding the final turn you can see two very quick first sectors as you've already said this is not going to be the time that will stand at the end of the qualifying session, at least uh, she and the team won't ho hope so. Uh, we had a 146 yesterday as a pole lap, so you can see it's still five seconds and change away from that. So times will progress over the next few minutes, and then we will see what happens as Luca Nomi also tries to leave his first mark with a 151-131 as a full second quicker. Again, there is still more on the track and in the cars. No question about that. Yeah, we expect to see times in the 146s, 147s, and uh, whilst Luca Nermi is the quickest at the moment, we are expecting those times to come tumbling down with the uh, remaining 24 minutes that exist in this uh, uh, Trofeo Pirelli qualifying session. Hello to you. Good morning. Glad you're with us to enjoy uh, this as Luca Nermi now sets himself up for what will be a potentially quicker lap than the last one. You can see the visor is open on the crash helmet, allowing some air through onto his face. Well, he's actually nine one hundredths down across the uh, first sector than his previous lap. So maybe this lap is not going to be the one that will break the records in terms of uh, qualifying pace. So 
Luca Nomi will uh, probably have to go again. Already we are seeing that uh, there are certain cars that are really pushing and pushing hard, and that means that they're exceeding track limits, including Arno Dahlmeyer, who incidentally drives for the uh, same team as uh, Dorian Pin, that is the Scuderia Nicky Iron Lynx team. So a warning with regards to track limits at turn four for uh, Arno Dahlmeyer. So Luca Nomi continues his quest then. You can see how hard it is when you're driving these cars with such force and such precision that sometimes the precision, it's difficult to keep the car within the white lines, which is what the uh, race control look at and determine whether anyone is exceeding the track limits. And there you can see Luca Nomi was certainly um, exploring the absolute limits of adhesion as the back end of the, ste the car stepped out through turn 13 and he power slid his way around that turn which whilst absolutely uh, a brilliant spectacle for us is not the quickest way around the track as you can see because he's delivered a 151.165 so more to come from Luca and bearing in mind that every single lap that Luca is uh, driving is taking a little bit more out of the uh, Pirelli rubber that he has available to him. Dorian Pin now is probably going to ease up because Although sector one was one of the, uh, well, was the quickest sector for anyone, uh, she now has traffic ahead. And uh, that means that uh, the opportunity, even though Marco Pulcini and David Gosner will make way for Dorian Pin, who is on a hot lap, this will compromise this lap's performance for Dorian. It seems remarkable, doesn't it, when uh, you have 4.481 kilometers of uh, tarmac that you do come across traffic because every driver is on a completely different strategy in terms of when they're going to do a hot lap and when they're not going to do a hot lap. Uh, John Vortig, now he's gone quicker than anyone through sector one and sector two and closes out the uh, lap with a 149.337. Now, John is the first driver then uh, to have delivered a sub 150 time. We still think there's at least two seconds, maybe even three seconds to be found uh, from the track and uh, we were expecting in the remaining uh, 22 minutes of this qualifying session or just under 22 minutes that that will be the case as Dorian Pin bails the lap uh, comes into the uh, comes into the pit lane and uh, Alessio Dono is also in the same place parked outside the CDP best lap garage conversations going on between engineers coaches and this Man is on track. Andre Bardi, who is quickest, and he's going quicker through turn 13. As you can see, the purple uh, S1 and S2 lights indicate that he is the uh, quickest driver and quicker than anyone through those two sectors. This is going to be a good lap from Andre Bardi, which may well vault even the best Trofeo Pirelli times. Indeed, it does. With the exception of John Vortique, who, of course, has put it into the 149s, Andre Bardi has delivered a 150.202. Can today he make it six wins out of six race starts as John Vortig is also on another very, very quick lap. So John Vortig, he was on pole position yesterday. Uh, his uh, target time is his uh, previous best time, which is 149.337. He'd like to even beat that. Uh, he has one more turn to do, which is turn 14. Target time, 149.337. Can the FML D2P driver uh, break that time, yes he can, with a 148.847. So by 1.3 seconds, he's uh, that much quicker than Ange Bardi at the moment. So John Vortig clearly has a liking for this Hungara ring circuit. Uh, John is an experienced racing driver, not only in uh, fantastic cars like these, but also in single seaters as well. He knows how to pedal a car. We saw that yesterday during qualifying as we listened to Dorian, or we tried to listen in. Unfortunately, our uh, RF camera down there doesn't have uh, the ability to uh, send the audio to us. Because, uh, as you can see, there's some consternation between Engineer and Dorian at the moment. And uh, Dorian undoubtedly will be going out again, you can see. Uh, rubber is being made available to the Scuderia Nicky Iron Lynx car, and that's also the case for the uh, number 19 car <coughs> of Alessio Dono. So it's John Vortique is the quickest uh, Pirelli driver. The quickest Pirelli AM driver is Ange Bardi. As uh, car number 25 now is uh, being warned with regards to track limits, and that's Alessandro Cozzi, who, 
as to be said, had a torrid time of it in the race yesterday. Again, he's another one of the drivers that will be hoping to right the wrongs of yesterday. Now, John Bautique on this lap, as you can see, sector one and sector two are not meaningful times. There are no improvements there. So uh, John will take it easy-ish uh, for the remainder of the lap. He at the moment holds the uh, honor of being the quickest driver out there, but we still have just under 19 minutes of this session to come, Nico. Yeah, he, he, in fairness, he didn't set uh, the world on fire, but equally he was less than one-tenth of the pace after two sectors. So that may still come as an improvement, not necessarily, we're still a little bit away from where we want, or we expect the drivers to be at the end of the session. And you were right in calling that. It was an improvement uh, overall. Right now, John would take 1.3 seconds quicker than everybody else. Um, but again, we expect that to change. As David Gosner had a good qualifying yesterday. Yes, he did. Had a little bit of strife in the race, uh, was involved in some very interesting battles, but got a five second penalty for track limits towards the end of the race, um, which uh, destroyed his hopes for a podium eventually, but yeah. uh, was part of an entertaining race yesterday. And we hope it's going to be a very similar situation today as he rounds the final turn of 150-202, the quickest in class, and he remains second in class for the time being. He could so have been on the podium yesterday. And I think the fact that uh, there were a number of track limits warnings came towards the end of the race, uh, which would if you like, reinforce what we've been saying about uh, how the track is quite abrasive and how it impacts on these very tyres is that obviously during the uh, or getting towards the end of the race when uh, the grip available to the drivers becomes less and less because you've taken more out of the tyres, then all of a sudden the track, uh, the track limits issue and it's, it's no deliberate ploy by the drivers, it's just literally as they turn uh, the car slides a little and it means they're not quite so accurate in terms of keeping it through the white lines as they would like to be and indeed Claudio Garavini, the race director, would like them to be. Yeah, absolutely. Very often the track limits is one thing that is particularly relevant in qualifying because you have laps disallowed. Um, because when the drivers try to get every little edge, every tenth and every one hundred, um, this is historian a takes a quick ex stage exit right, which mm. the, the pace of which seems to yes. suggest she will be coming I back. I agree with you. Um, so when it's the drivers trying to take advantage of track limits, then it's generally something that pops up in qualifying. We didn't see a single instance of a track being disallowed in qualifying yesterday, no, no. which lends support to the theory that it is actually something that the drivers are not doing deliberately, yes. um, but are just running out of grip in some instances. This is Andrew Gilbert then uh, for Kessel Racing. And Andrew has delivered a time of 152.340, 152.340. So probably more to come from uh, Andrew, who's uh, P4 in class. Uh, a reminder to you, there are two. Hello to the Scuderia Ferrari Club, the official Ferrari passion from uh, Budapest. Uh, lovely to see you here and uh, welcome. Uh, just to... Uh, uh, go on with what I was saying with regards to there are two categories within the Ferrari Challenge Trophy Pirelli. The Trophy Pirelli drivers, you can identify them because they have a red strip across the top of the windscreen, and the uh, Pirelli Am drivers have a white strip across the top of the windscreen. Don't lean too far over and drop your phone, that would be curtains, and we wouldn't want you to do that. Here we look at the number three car of uh, Max Mugelli for CDP Eureka Competition, who is currently second fastest of the Pirelli drivers. Third fastest overall, but second within class. All the order, as you can see on the left-hand side of your screen for you. And the one that is not yet and has not yet, in my opinion, set a time which I would expect to see relative to his race performance yesterday in his first ever race in the Ferrari Challenge. Uh, he's certainly raced uh, in GT cars. That's Josef Kral, who's driving for Scuderia Pra. He was very impressive in the race yesterday, Nico. Yeah, definitely. was very, very uh, entertaining. Um, the other driver who hasn't set a time yet, we, you talked about him earlier, is Nicola Rosi. Yes. Um, and the fact that you're currently not seeing any cars out on track is the fact that they're all in the pit lane right now. So that gives us a chance to look at some Highlight shots, in this case, John Wartig. Enjoy.
those were wonderful shots and this man in particular Luca Nomi you could see just how hard they go that they push those cars particularly through that uh, uh, chicane which is turn six and seven I lift in virtually so that there's uh, fresh air beneath the rubber and the track surface absolutely amazing um, at the limits of aggressiveness without losing the car but my goodness me when you really really slow those images down you can see just how how they push these cars and how responsive the cars are to the uh, to the pushing that the drivers are, are giving them absolutely wonderful to watch yeah definitely we saw some great images yesterday on a split screen where you can see the the car going through the turns at the same time you have the driver working the wheel um, which really shows how the drivers uh, have to work um, to get the car in position and to steer them through those uh, twisty parts especially the second sector where for the drivers is really non-stop yes i agree so we're going to uh uh, offer you the opportunity to meet one of our drivers in uh, just a few moments time and we have a number of those drivers uh, which we can afford you the opportunity to meet um, and it's going to be uh, John Vortig for FML D2P. Uh, hi, I'm John Vortig. I'm uh, racing in Ferrari Challenge with uh, D2P. My favorite track is of course my home track and Spa but uh, there is few Portimao was my favorite one but uh, yeah, we had some issue during this weekend uh, and I think Silverstone I really enjoy the fast track so I think Silverstone will be my favorite since since last year uh, I fight for the podium and I really want to fight for the championship um, most important is to be consistent during all the race and uh, that's what I try to do um, so yeah the main goal is of course to win the championship John is in my opinion Mr. Consistency. Now, we talked about this young man, yes, uh, just a little bit earlier on, Nicola Rossi. Here he is now, and uh, Nicola Rossi has not really set a time yet, so he has 11 and a half minutes, as near as makes no difference, to uh, do so. He was good in the race yesterday, got involved in an unfortunate situation, not of his making, and that saw his race really, really compromised. So, uh, wish him best wishes and uh, best of luck to Nicola Rossi. So, the time is running out, and all of a sudden, the uh, track becomes uh, somewhat busier than it has been for the previous few moments as uh, Nicola Rossi now uh, this will probably be his uh, first attempt at a uh, proper timed lap we run the clock on Nicola Rossi for uh, KSL Racing I was extelling the virtues Nico if you will of Nicola and how in the couple of seasons that we have seen him racing with KSL uh, benefiting of course from the coaching from the likes of uh, uh, David Fuminelli and Nicolo Skiro and such like uh, Nicola really has uh, his racecraft has you know, improved tremendously and he uh, really is a hugely competitive driver now, Nico. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can, you can sense that his first win is only a matter of time after um, being a little bit further off the podium in previous seasons. But yeah, and it, it's a story we see time and time again. You look at the likes of Willem van der Worm and others yes. who are there and they always show talent they always show glimpses of talent on one track or the other and then they fall back on another one and then you can see you can sense from one season to the next where they're always among the top five always among the top three and you can really sense how Nicola Rossi is taking that step from being someone who's there occasionally to someone who's consistently someone to be reckoned with so that consistency is always that thing that differentiates the top runners also for the championship um, from the field because the talent is there for all of them and look at look at what he's delivering Nico he was 1.8 seconds down on uh, the previous best time that had been set so Nicola Rossi uh, this uh, he's got traffic ahead of him I don't think that's going to compromise the conclusion of this lap this is going to be uh, let me describe it as a humdinger because that's what I think it's going to be as he heads towards breaking the timing beam now it's going to be a 147.978 Nico he has taken 2.224 seconds out of the previous best time He's the best driver out there on track in terms of speed. And he's a Trofeo Pirelli AM driver. Yeah, definitely. I think part of that is that the track has evolved, evolved. a little bit yes. over the last few minutes, so that certainly helped. But 147.9 is really 
Um, a massive statement from Niccolo. Now, I think you identified that he has got traffic ahead of him. And yeah, that is not a quick lap because no. I think he recognized and the team recognized there's no point in pushing now for another lap directly because you will come upon traffic. So he's going to have a little bit of a breather as the other cars like uh, Dorian Pin just are just finishing their out laps or Dorian has just started her first lap for her second time. It's eight and a half minutes remaining. Running out of time now, aren't we? Yeah, and it's now all but John Wartig. All the other cars are out on the track. It's a long track, but traffic is something that can be really hampering you, especially in the second sector, where there is no way for a slower car to really get to the side. Yes. So the target time for sector one is 37.709. Here comes Dorian then, and I don't think this is a competitive, well, 37.884. I just felt she wasn't pushing as hard as she could. Uh, David Gosner has just gone quicker than anyone through sector one. If I'm honest with you, Nico, with no disrespect to some of the drivers, we are seeing uh, that track evolution is really benefiting drivers that ordinarily we would not necessarily expect to see um, painting their sector boxes in purple. <laughs> yeah, I think this uh, break kind of and the fact that there were a few times set over the last few minutes helps. Um, but uh, I do think that we will see uh, improvements all across the board, whether it's personal or overall improvements, as David Gosner puts it into P2 in class, which is also P2 overall, just 18 uh, one hundredths uh, off the Nicola Rosi time. Now, Dorian, in her quest to improve, has exceeded track limits at turn number four. Uh, it's only a warning at this stage, but it just proves that it's potentially impacting every driver during qualifying. You've got to be, uh, you've got to be pinpoint accurate between the white lines. Here comes Dorian Pin now. She's currently uh, third fastest. Personal best, then an overall best, and another overall best, but it means that uh, she is not where she would like to be. Here comes Luca Nermi. He's improving as well. Uh, whilst we've been watching those cars, Alessio Dono has gone quickest of everyone by uh, just under two tenths. He's better than Nicolo Rossi, and he's the second driver to put it into the 47s. I predict that Luca Nermi is going to be the third driver to put it into the 47s. Here he comes now, having done uh, brilliant sectors one and sector two. And now a driver that I said we've not seen uh, is Josef Kral for Scuderia Prague. This could be quick. A number of drivers, including this one, being warned about track limits. Here comes uh, Luca Nermi now. He crosses the timing line in a 1.46, the first sub 1.47 time. But because of the track limit, the time is going to be disallowed, which is immensely frustrating, Nico, because you've taken a lap's worth of rubber out of those tires and your lap is not going to stand. So Luca Nermi then, all of that great effort, wasted is, the, is not the term to use, but uh, futile. True. On taking a positive, he has more than a sector of empty tarmac right ahead of him, so he has all the chance in the world to just to put that right. And Josef Kral has put it right for him, a 146.635, that's a very impressive time, puts it on P1 and really puts some space between himself and everybody else for the time being. Other good times, Luca Nomi, very good first sector, even quicker, quickest overall, where is, um, where is Dorian Pin? A long way down, Nico. A long way down, on, on the trajectory to really close that gap. Um, and uh, indeed she does. P2, one, one thousandth of a second Whoa. is the margin right now. So How close can it be, Nico? How close can it be? There she came out of almost nowhere, blitzed the final sector, and we're seeing still more improvement. John Wartik, one of them. Luca Nomi, as you can see, seven one thousandths of the pace. Now this is the very, very critical final section. This almost hairpin, and then there is another 180 degree corner to, which awaits as Luca Nomi attacks. You have to start that turn a little bit from the outside and then draw yourself into the apex early on the throttle onto the straight to the finish line. A 146, 635, not quite, but good time from Luca Nomi. Uh, this time it stands, and that was actually a better time than he did the last it time was, around. So, yes. um, uh, here is John Wartig. What can he do? Quicker than anyone, sector one, personal best through sector two. He can make it work. Let's see as he crosses the timing line, but sector three, uh, 
with Sector 2 was not good enough. So it is, uh, I mean, look at the margins. They are so close, Nico, across the first five drivers. It's extraordinary. And Dorian Pin is still has found still a further improvement across Sectors 1 and Sector 2. Seven and a half, one hundredths better than uh, Josef Kral's time. So this is going to be good from Dorian Pin, or is it? Because she has Nicola Rossi ahead. So now whatever Nicola Rossi does to try and avoid Dorian Pin, it will impact potentially, and Nicolo could not have done more in terms of trying to get the car out of the way. Yeah, he tried. Uh, Dorian will, f will feel like he could have maybe moved over a little earlier. Well, will it figure? 146. Five. Yes, it does. Well, she does still go P1. Uh, so that means the burden on trying to edge her for pole position moves over to the likes of Josef Kra, Luke Nomi, John Wojcik with a very good first sector. He is pushing. And Jabardi currently only P4 in the Amps. Uh, as Arno Dahmer, Marco Pulcini, and Nicola Rosi are the top three. And Jabardi, who you mentioned, is, has a undisputed series of wins. Five out of five. He's only P4 currently in the Amps. Will he be able to make this lap count? There is John Wojcik. Lost a little bit of time in the second sector. Two and a half minutes. I think this might be his last realistic shot. When you look at that and you think he's lost, uh, he was down just over two tenths. Two tenths is minuscule, but it's huge, actually, in terms of having to make that up through sector three. So here is John Boutique, then. He's going to round out the lap now. Sector one was quicker than anyone. Sector two, he was down a bit. As we round out the third and final sector, John Boutique, with a 146.761 means it's a P3. And I think you're right, Nico. Is he going to be able to go again? Has he got the life in those tires to do it and again? Will, and will he decide to do that and maybe take more out of them? And Jabardi, we were talking about him just now, has put it yeah. on pole for the AMs. P6 overall, just ahead of Max Mugelli. He is P1 once again, relegating Arno Dahmer, Marco Pulcini to P2 and 3. As we see the Alessandro... Sorry, that is the Marco okay. Pulcini yep. car. Apologies. Currently P3 in the AMS. And not uh, going to improve that. Yeah, and he doesn't look that dissatisfied. I agree. Uh, as we look at the other sector times, is there an improvement somewhere over the last minute and a half? John Wojcik is going again, 13 one hundredths down after the first sector, but that has generally been his uh, sweet spot on the track. That's where he was generally the quickest. So it's going to be a tall order to improve to P1. And just look at the, the gaps, you know, Josef Kral, 38 one thousandths of the pace. And the first four cars within basically two tenths of a second. And there is the lady who has put it on pole provisionally, at least. And that is the aggression that's being used. Whoa, that's a big save from Dorian, Nico. And that, I'm, I'm sorry for Dorian, but I'm delighted for me that that happened because that proves just how, when you are so aggressive, it can really unsettle the car, Nico. <laughs> yeah, you can see she was pushing. She was really pushing there, and that could have gone horribly they wrong, could. but uh, she, it didn't, and uh, credit to her driving skills, obviously. Um, I have to be honest, much We're that I would like to build we? the drama, it's all over. Um, the drama has gone away, and having come back with a vengeance is Dorian Pin Back to pole position, there is Luca Nomi. Who is still out on the track? He can still go. He's just completed a lap, but I'm not sure if Luca's really pushing on that lap. No, I think I agree with you. Um, I think pretty much the order we have on the left hand side of your screen is the order that we will be uh, left with. And I don't think Luca Nomi is going to improve. I'm just looking at the sector times. Uh, there's Dorian Pin. There's Arno Dahlmeyer. Uh, good qualifying from Arno Dahlmeyer. We mustn't uh, mustn't lose sight of the fact that he's second fastest within glass. So very good quality from Arno. Well done. Um, he driving, of course, for the same uh, Scuderia Nicky Iron Links team to uh, that of Dorian Pin. And uh, Dorian Pin, it is. Uh, we had four drivers in the 146s in the end. They are Dorian Pin, Josef Kral, Jon Bortik, and Luca Nurmi. And uh, there is the Andrew Gilbert car with a, uh, I mean, the spread of times is really, really tight, Nico, particularly about at the top end, isn't it? You know, as you say, a three one thousand, uh, sorry, um, 
three one hundredths Joseph Kral, the difference between Joseph Kral and Dorian Pin. Look at the excitement in there. Dorian is absolutely delighted. She so nearly lost the car. Yeah, definitely. Top eight drivers within one second. Amazing. Uh, really, really tight, and that includes uh, Arnold Dahlmeier and Angie Bardi. So uh, two of the M drivers within one second of Dorian Pin. So. Uh, very, very good qualifying um, from our entire grid, I have to say. Yes, I agree. Uh, very, very interesting and very intense. And I think you can see from Dorian that this was one that she had to fight for and fight for it she did. As mm. We take a look at some evocative images of our qualifying session in Trofeo Pirelli. So Dorian Pin for Scuderia Nikki Iron Links has done it all over again. A pole position, and uh, she is with Marietta now. Dorian, this uh, qualifying was very different from other sessions we have seen uh, this year. You had to battle more for it, put in more laps, and you were really pushing towards the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, it was really hard because it's more hot uh, today compared to yesterday so with the tires and, and everything you need to manage but uh, I think I, I managed well and I'm super happy to take the pole position here because I discovered the track on Friday so yeah it, the work is is really good uh, with the team so the result is is good for sure thank you very much so Dorian then who uh as she said, she only discovered the track last week. Uh, that's because she'd not found it on a map. I'm not suggesting that. It's the first time that she's... <laughs> Don't look at me in such horror. It is, of course, her first. And I'm amazed that Dorian has not raced here at Hungara Ring before. But uh, there we are. She's uh, nailed it, that's for sure. Uh, here is the classification. Dorian Pin, Josef Kral, John Vortik, the fastest three of the Trophy Pirelli drivers. For Trophy Pirelli Am, it's uh, Ange Barde, uh, Arno Dalmeyer and Marco Pulcini, the top three. But we give you the first uh, five. Five rows there, and then David Gosner, Alessandro Cozzi, and Andrew Gilbert. So then uh, P11, P12, and P13 in the grid overall. So there we have it, qualifying for Trofeo Pirelli done and dusted. No, what it does do, it uh, leads us into what will be a fascinating story in the race to come this afternoon. Make sure you join Nico and myself for that. Goodbye for now.